Hello there, welcome to Talk Financials again, another video um, today, Ted taking us through the accounts of ITV, uh, the UK's dominant free-to-air public sector commercial TV station. Uh, you may have seen in the news recently, they've just re-signed their star presenters, Anton Deck, for a reported 30 million quid over the next five years. Um, bargain. Yeah, absolute bargain. And I think it tells you something about the direction they intend to go in, which is at least in terms of light entertainment, you know, the same direction they've been going in for, for many years with those two. Um, but, you know, on a more serious note, as I say, Ted's here to take us through the accounts in some detail, have a look at how ITV has fared over the, the difficult recent past, how advertising revenues have been affected, um, which is their, their, their main source of income, of course, as a commercial broadcaster, and have a look, as usual, um, at how their top brass are paid, not just Anton Deck, but the board um, of ITV, um, uh, and also uh, have a look at the share price. Uh, as always, it's just our opinion on uh, how the share price is performing, how we see it potentially evolving, whether we think there's value. It's not investment advice, um, just, just our thoughts on that. So um, I'll hand over straight away to Ted and uh, let's have a look at ITV. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Johnny. So um, uh, good to see you again. Welcome to all of our viewers. Welcome back to our subscribers. If you are a subscriber, if you are not a subscriber, please do hit on the subscribe button and please uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Um, uh, and um, this is a request uh, from James Spence. So James uh, said, uh, I'd like to see a deep dive on ITV PLC to see if they can cope throughout the downturn and recover so james this is for you um and if anybody else would like a uh, a, a video um uh, of a company then please please do leave um uh, your uh, detail in the um in the comments section um so here we are um this is the annual report and account. Now we're looking at 2021, and I appreciate that we are now in 2020, January 2023, recording this. So this is out of date, and the 2022 will be available um, uh, soon, um, we hope. But this is the numbers that we are looking at. The annual report and account available on their website, um, and uh, Anton Deck and Light Entertainment. There we go. It's a bit more light entertainment for you. Um, so... Uh, you know, if you want to see about what their strategy is and what they're up to and who's there and et cetera, et cetera, all of that information um, is contained in uh, this report. But we are going to scroll through uh, and focus on the actual numbers. And the numbers takes a while to get there. Um, but here they are on page. Uh, what are we on page? 172. So um, a fairly substantial way through the um, accounts. 172 of about 266. So uh, uh, what are they doing? Profit. So their profit is uh, we're in millions of pounds, four point, uh, three point four, three point five, basically three and a half thousand million. That's three and a half billion pounds. So the revenue is three and a half billion and the operating costs are three billion. OK, that's the two point nine billion here. Uh, and those operating costs they talk about kind of operating costs they don't really you know i mean obviously they do sell something but they they're not manufacturing so there's no cost of goods sold here so they take all of the cost of making the making the programs the cost of paying ant and deck and they just lump everything together and say look this is the cost of uh, of running itv and the, the costs are basically the same if one person is watching or a million people are watching, which is why viewing figures are so important to these guys, because the more people who view it, then they can go to the advertisers and say, look, we've got 15 million people watching Anton Deck on a, on a Saturday night or whatever it is. And the advertisers will then pay more to advertise to those people. So pretty straightforward business model there. Um, operating profit, um, 519 uh, million, so half a billion, um, which is about a 15% of revenue. So for every pound the advertiser pays them that's the kind of effectively their revenue uh, every pound they get from their advertiser um they spend 85p uh, on making the content and running the business and the running the business will probably be a relatively small part there'll be lots of people out on location and, and kind of you know in the in the um uh, in the studios etc cetera, etc cetera. um up from the previous year um and uh you know, a little bit of financing costs, suggesting they've got a little bit of debt sitting on the balance sheet um, uh, and there's their profit. Um, and then they're paying a little bit of tax and they end up with a profit for the year of 388 million 
pounds, which is 11% net margin. That's 11% of the revenue um, figure. Um, I don't think there's anything really to kind of, you know, often we, you know, we, we, we like to compare these two numbers here. Uh, it doesn't look like a problem, interest cover. So, you know, if you're paying 58 million and you make your profit of 500 million, then you're, you're about 10 times covered and, and we're reasonably comfortable with that. So it doesn't look like debt is a problem for these guys. Um, uh, and obviously, you know, their focus is going to be, you know, we need to grow this top line um, and we just need to make sure that we manage those operating costs. So, you know, obviously hard negotiations with Anton Deck, um, who probably opened on about 120 million and then negotiated down to 30 million. Um, looking at the balance sheet, um, the balance sheet, quite interesting. So the biggest number on the balance sheet is uh, this number up here. Um, the intangible assets. So intangible assets, um, those you remember, it's things that we can't touch. Um, so, uh, you know, they'll they'll probably rent a lot of their buildings. They'll have a lot of cameras and all that kind of stuff. There's the property, plant and equipment. Um, but most of it is an intangible. So we ought to just go and have a look at note 3.3 um, um, to see uh, what is actually in there because it's such a big number. So uh, that's on page 207. If we just scroll down. Here we go. So here is the intangible assets. Um, and without taking you all the way through this, what we're really interested in is just looking at what, what have they actually got this top line. So Goodwill suggests that they have grown through acquisition. So they bought, bought you know, rather than, um, you know, you just go and buy another, uh, you know, uh, 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 TV channel, for example. Um, uh, they've got some some goodwill around uh, some intangibles around brands and formats. So that's things like, you know, if you own I don't know. I'm 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 going to say I'm I know I'm going to say the wrong um uh, the the wrong uh, uh program which somebody's just going to say this is not on ITV but you know I'm a celebrity get me out of here for example which I think is ITV um uh you know they they kind of they own that they've developed that brand and they're allowed to capitalize that um uh, they've got some licenses on there which allows them to kind of you know to broadcast um their libraries they've got some you know software etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know there's there's a lot of intangible assets um uh, sitting there and you can see there's the book value um uh, the net book value rather um uh, as that um uh, sorry not that one there it's uh, this one down here the net book value um uh, at the end of the year which is the cost less the total amount that it's been amortized or written down this amortization is basically the write down it's depreciation by another word effectively uh, an impairment is where you just write things um uh, off completely anyway so um those are their um the, sort of the biggest assets they've got sitting on their balance sheet um and then they've also got a whole lot of uh, current assets and the current assets, um, mainly uh, cash. Um, they've got a little bit of um, uh, trade receivables, people who owe the money, and they've got, got you know, what they could call inventory, which is kind of program rights. So they might pay, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, HBO um, a, a fee for the right to show, you know, an American sitcom here in the UK, for example. And, and, and that's um, effectively uh, the, the payment of that right. You know, if it, if it runs for, you know, a couple of years, um, uh, it'll, it'll be sitting in there. Um, uh, and uh, this other contract assets as well. So um, total current assets, 2.2 uh, billion on 1.9 billion of uh, 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 non-current assets um, gives them, what's that, about 4.3 billion, 4.2 billion uh, of uh, uh, assets. Liabilities, um, there's the current liabilities, 1.6 billion, and the non-current liabilities. Again, we always do a little liquidity check. Uh, no problems there in terms of liquidity for these guys. Um, there is some debt sitting there. We can see the debt. There it is. I'm highlighting it. So not a lot of debt and the debt is easily affordable. So no alarm bells going off um, uh, with those guys. Um, uh, and, um, you know, you know, contract liabilities, um, uh, kind of making movies, um, and making programs, uh, trade and other payables to their suppliers. You know, those are the, those are the kind of the, the big numbers. So nothing really kind of jumping out at me is there's no sort of gremlins no massive hoo has you know liquidity doesn't look like a problem for these guys you know they are growing you know they've grown their top line by 24 percent from 2020 to 2021 which is good you know can they continue to can you they continue to grow that's kind of the the, the question um and they are funded through retained earnings here's the equity 
um, uh, and they are making profits and they're reinvesting those profits back into the business. That's reinforced in this equity. Um, so here is the equity. We're looking at this column here, which is the retained earnings. Um, what we're looking at there is the previous year. In fact, no, that is this year, sorry. Um, so there's the profit for the year um, that they make. And um, you, we can see that, you know, they are, um, you know, basically they're not paying out any dividends. There's no dividends being paid out um, during the year. Uh, if we look at the previous year, um, again, uh, no dividends being paid out. So they, you know, quite interesting. So at the beginning of 2020, they had retained earnings of a million. They made a profit of 285 and they kept that all in the business. OK, and, and, and so that kind of that what was retained in the business at the end of last year is now sitting at the beginning of this year. Um, uh, and then they make another profit and they're keeping it in the business. So these guys are definitely, you know, they're keeping hold of the profits. They're not paying out dividends. They are looking to kind of use that to fund uh, the growth, you know, with a view to paying out a dividend at some point in the future. Um, and if you look at their cash flow, now cash flow is quite interesting. So the cash flow from operating activities, 171. Now, this is quite an interesting number because it's very much lower than their um, than their profit. Um, so the cash flow from operating activities before exceptional items, very, very cash generative, this business. But there's all of these exceptional items going on. Um, and the exceptional items uh, relates to, you know, you can look at a kind of the note here, um, but there's sort of cost relating to the, the acquisition of something, uh, I guess it's a, a channel called Talpa, um, uh, who they have bought. So what they're trying to do is to show here is the effect of uh, those cash, uh, of those kind of exceptional items. And the theory is that, you know, you say, you know, it's a one-off, only we kind of notice that the one-off seem to happen on a fairly regular basis. So I'm always a little bit skeptical about that. Um, and I like to kind of focus on this, that this is the actual number that they generated, including one-offs, which seem to happen on a regular basis. Um, cash outflow from investing activities, um, 65. So they're kind of, they're investing in property, plant and equipment. Um, we quite often like to kind of compare that to our depreciation. It's very similar to the depreciation figure, which is about 59 million. So which says that they're just, they're replacing their assets um, uh, and, and, and that's good as well. Um, and then a little bit of financing, you know, they're kind of refinancing some of their loans, paying off leases, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit of financing, but not a massive movement in cash. So in the previous year, they went from 200 million to 600 million in the bank. And this year, you know, they stayed at basically at 600 million um, uh, in the bank. Um, you know, a little increase of 71 um, uh, during the year. So cash flow really not looking like an issue at all. Um, so these guys looking, you know, pretty good, I have to admit. Um, I'll... I'll just sort of whiz back here to look at the um, uh, the the income statement um, uh, down the bottom here. You've got earnings per share. So this is basically saying if you own one share in ITV of that three hundred and eighty eight million pounds in profit, you get nine point four P. OK, uh, so known as EPS or earnings per share. And the previous year um, it was seven point one. So what we see here is a significant increase in the earnings per share and and this is a, a you know a key metric um that um uh, people will look at that's a that's a 33 percent increase so often masked by you know share buybacks for example so 33 percent increase in um now the question is are they going to be able to are they going to be able to maintain that um uh, that kind of increase in earnings per share i would be very uh, i think it'd be very unlikely um uh, but but quite possibly Anyway, um, the reason I'm showing you that is that if we look at their share price, here is their share price. Um, uh, we're looking at the bit down the bottom. I've, I've given you the, the, the full uh, share price ever since they started, um, ever since they floated. Um, market cap, 3.2, um, uh, 3.3 billion. Um, that's a P ratio of about seven times earnings. Um, uh, just to put that into perspective, if you turn that upside down, so if you do the earnings, divided by the price, you get a 12% yield. So 12% yield is a pretty good yield, uh, which suggests that seven times earnings is relatively cheap. Now, you know, these guys face challenges from, you know, 
all over the place, you know, TikTok and YouTube and people don't watch TV anymore and, and Netflix and Disney, and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, these guys have some really testing times ahead of us. However, it suggests to me that, you know, they know what they're good at. They're good at, you know, Schofield and, uh, and, and, and Holly Willoughby. They're good at Ant and Deck. They're investing in, uh, in these guys. They're keeping their viewers in Good Morning Britain or whatever it is. Um, etc etc um uh, and they you know you, you obviously they're on the um uh, on the on the streaming as well so it looks to me like you know they, they're really trying to sort of hunker down and make sure that they they um they can deliver 3.2 billion their balance sheet 2.6 billion so a little bit of goodwill in there so they're trading just above book value but not massively it's not it's not crazy valuations so and, and actually interesting enough the reason i wanted to show you that earnings per share um, is that um, we often use this to calculate the PEG um, ratio, the price to earnings growth, which is, uh, by my calculations, about 0.26. Now, anything below one suggests that it is cheap. So it looks to me like this is very cheap, especially if it's going to be growing at 33%. And it's not, it's not going to grow at 30%. Earnings are not going to grow at 30 or earnings per share. And at least I, I don't believe they're going to grow at, at, at 30%. Um, but even so, if we look at um, uh, over the last five years, it's had a pretty rocky ride. Um, there's the pandemic. Um, uh, in fact, no, that isn't the pandemic. Sorry, that's my mistake. There's the pandemic um, uh, coming through. So, uh, and they kind of bounce off. And I don't know exactly what happened there, but um, there was a sort of a big old fall in the share price. But, um, you know, there's no real trend analysis in there. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, I don't know, the jury is very much out on this. You know, are they, are they, uh, you know, are they cheap uh, and a buy? Are they expensive and a sell? Um, are they going to be bust within, you know, a couple of years? Are they actually um, going to sort of, you know, plough their own furrow and, and be very, very successful in their kind of, their carved out niche in the world of TikTok and, uh, and instant entertainment? Uh, you know, honestly, I have absolutely no idea. Um, uh, if I knew that, I wouldn't be sitting here. So, um, you know, they are cheap. Maybe they're cheap for a reason, but it's not. Their financials are healthy. They've got a pretty strong balance sheet. They've got a pretty good PL account sitting behind them. So if they are cheap, it's mainly because of the kind of you know people's nervousness about where ITV sits in the in the kind of the media world um, uh, going forward. So that is our analysis. Um, let's just finish off uh, looking at um, who's in charge and see what they are getting paid. So if we have a look on page um, 148 um, uh, of these uh, uh, of these accounts, um, we can find the director's remuneration. Here it is, um, and the uh, there we go. Um, so um, uh, we're looking at Carolyn McCall, uh, and Carolyn McCall is on. Uh, there's lots and lots of numbers that you can kind of use, but um, I'm just going to stick with the kind of you know the single. Uh, I quite like this. It's a single figure total remuneration, a uh, three and a half million pounds in 2021. Uh, so a significant discount to Anton Deck, but even so, three and a half million pounds looks pretty good to me. A slight increase, you'll notice, Johnny, on the previous year of 1.1 million pounds. Um, so that is a two. 105 percent increase okay so somebody somewhere is feeling very pleased with themselves um, uh, for getting a 200 percent more than 200 percent pay rise how does that compare to um the employees in itv well um if we dig into the notes uh on page 188 of this document uh here is the um uh, uh, yeah, here are the staff costs. Um, so we can see, and again, we're just going to take the sort of, you know, the bottom number. So total, uh, and this is a, a FTEE, -E, so full time employee equivalent staff costs £332 million, up from £282 million in the previous year. And how many staff uh, do they employ? Well, we're going to use the FTE. Um, uh, the full-time equivalent uh, that basically says if you've got somebody who works in the morning somebody who works in the afternoon that's two people but they're one full-time equivalent uh, is three uh, uh, six uh, six thousand three hundred and fifteen people so if you pay six thousand three hundred um, and fifteen people and you pay them a total of uh, uh, sorry, the total staff costs are actually this 533. Obviously, this is um, uh, what's allocated to production. So um, the 533 is the total staff costs. Um, uh, if you take uh, those two numbers together, the average pay is about £87,000 per person. Previous year, 
worked out at £75,000 per person, which is an increase of 16%. Um, so there you go. Now, there's obviously going to be distortions in there. And Ant and Deck, I, I think they will be, um, they won't be employees, they'll be con contractors. Um, uh, so this talks about you know, how they exclude short term contractors, for example. So, um, you know, they will have their own production company and ITV will engage with their production company in order to kind of, you know, uh, get their services, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, 16% increase in salary. Um, so 87,000 is pretty good, um, but nowhere near the 200% um, uh, that Carolyn McCall has seen. And there is our analysis of ITV, Johnny. Very interesting. Thank you, Ted. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it was just striking me when you were going through that and talking about some of the, the risks, the, the threats they face from the streaming platforms, for example, that one obvious advantage ITV has is that it's free to air and at least their viewers don't have to pay a subscription. So they're not sitting at home wondering whether they want to continue um, paying a, a monthly whack to keep watching ITV. The, the internal risk, obviously, if it isn't subscribers for ITV, comes from advertisers and whether they're going to continue paying for adverts through tough economic times. So I guess that, that ITV would need to be careful to look at who's advertising with them and try and target companies that are not going to be badly hit um, if they're exposed to the next shock that comes along. So I guess to I be resilient, they need those sort of advertisers that are very robust. Yeah, I think I think you're right. And also they need the kind of the generic advertisers like Tesco, for example who advertise to everybody. So if you think about YouTube, for example, YouTube is also free to air, but you do have to watch adverts just like ITV. But YouTube, they know your viewing habits and therefore they theoretic they theoretically serve you relevant adverts to you. Whereas if you're on ITV and you're advertising, you're going to know that, you know, you know 80 percent or 70 percent of your advert is going to somebody who's just not interested in your product for whatever reason. So a um, little bit more. It, it, there's always a little bit more difficult those kind of algorithms and, and, and I think that's what's what people are nervous about is the advertisers just saying look I can get a better return on my investment by advertising on YouTube because you know I'm I'm advertising to people who are searching cars for example or I'm advertising to people who are searching for you know particular products so that's just a kind of you know to to to, to, to bear in mind yeah and just finally for me when I was looking through some of the the, the news about ITV earlier I noticed that under the Broadcasting Act, I think they have to have 25% of the programmes they put on there have to come from independent production companies. They have to look for those independent um, programmes. I think recently it's been more like 40% and they are trying to reduce the amount um, of um, independent productions that they're bringing in to make stuff in-house. And I guess that's one way of getting more control over their costs and making sure they're not having to buy an ever more expensive independent program. So maybe worth watching that, see if they can get more done in-house, rely less on external producers and, and sort of keep costs under control that way. Absolutely. Well, awesome. I tell you what, um, Johnny, I'd be interested to know what our viewers think. So if anybody out there is watching and they have any uh, particular insight into ITV, uh, maybe you are working for them, maybe you used to work for them, maybe you want to work for them, maybe you are working for a production company um, and you say, no, Johnny, they've been hammering down our costs and we make stuff for free practically, um, then please do uh, use the comments box. Please, 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 though, do be polite. Um, uh, politeness comes uh, at no cost at all, um, but do share us your insights, your thoughts. Is ITV a buy? Is it a sell? Would you invest? Uh, are you not going to touch it? There we go. So um, if you've enjoyed that, please do like, share, subscribe um, on, on the relevant buttons. And just remains for me to say thanks, Ted, and see you next time. No worries, Johnny. Good to see you. Catch you later. See you later. See you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big 
online one and the QR code once again will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, otherwise that's everything from me please 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 don't forget to like share and subscribe uh, to the channel more subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up uh, and also the opportunity to you know ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel and I will see you on the next video.